Hey guys, welcome back to Texas Yacht. Uh, we are at a new property tonight. Well, we've been out here one weekend before and we took uh, one board. It's a cornfield. Corn is super tall and um, we had a bunch of hogs in there. The farmer called um, a friend of ours who works with us and uh, said, hey, you guys need to come out ASAP basically. And so we didn't, uh, didn't wait too long, went out the same night just to kind of like uh, see what's going on. Anyways, tonight we are back here. We are having Chris's uh, Polaris Ranger, which is nice because we do have a bit to, uh, to uh, go around this field and um, that way we can start it out some better. Uh, Micah isn't on the way. Um, we haven't been out with Micah now for a while. We start here in the cornfield and then later go to our, the big wheat fields. It's been cut. Um, I'm expecting that we'll just see again just a carpet of hogs in that field. So hopefully it's going to be a good night. Maybe we can we can up our record of the 19 hawks, I think, which was the most so far last year. Um, this is definitely the season where we see a lot of hawks and uh, have the opportunity to take a lot. So let's try to capitalize on that and make it happen. This was a slow night at this cornfield. We did see some hogs uh, make their way into the field in the distance, but they were like 300 yards out, so um, couldn't really do anything about that. Otherwise, there was no hogs feeding on the edge of, of this field. Um, I guess we still have to get a, get a sense of where they're coming in and maybe even what time. Uh, this almost seems like it's more like a morning property. So time to pack up and uh, drive over to the wheat field. After arriving at the wheat field, we uh, quickly discovered that there's multiple saunders in the field and uh, we're making our way towards one of them. So we, uh, we went after two groups. Uh, the first one was actually, I think I counted nine. How many did you count the first it, one? Yeah, it was probably nine or 10. It was a good, good group, but um, we sucked. So our shooting wasn't, wasn't very good. <laughs> um, the problem was also they were somewhat close to the fence line. So they, they went to our right and at least I had the fence and then a deer blind in my side pretty quick yeah so there was not a lot of room for us to follow up yeah, I'm it was trying just a to, couple follow-up shots yeah. and they're ready in, in the woods mine dropped and I think that's the that's all over there mm -hmm. so she went down some groups in, in the distance they took off uh, that was unfortunate all of a sudden it was basically just us in the field so uh, I was hoping that evening would go different but then we had one group further out and they were probably six, seven hundred yards away from us. Yeah. So we made our way all the way out, um, tried to work the wind, um, got to the tree lines, uh, you know, hit in the shade. And then we got up to maybe 60, 70 yards. Yeah. I mean, we were fairly close. Um, I don't know if the road noise is, is going to be audible on, on, this, uh, on the sound or the audio here, but 
that actually helped us. We had quite a bit of road noise cover our movements. So we got close to them and actually then dropped four. So the, I guess, from here to the left, those are the ones we dropped in that second um, group. Uh, so that was pretty good. And that's where my friend here, the Remington Tech 13 came in. Uh, the first time I'm taking out today and I just put 12 gauge birdshot in. So I'm like, there was everything I had at home. Uh, put my Streamlight uh, on here. It's um, the Streamlight, what is it? TLR2 HLG. So it's the one with, you know, has a laser on there, um, which is pretty handy. And then we did a quick test. We actually took the TAC 13 um, at about 10 yards, oh, maybe not, not even 10 yards, less than 10 yards, yeah. <laughs> um, and took a shot at, at the boar on the ground. Um, he was already expired. Didn't penetrate, right? Mm. You could see the bird shot on the boar's skin, lots of little white dots. So it, it does not penetrate. Um, even at that, at that very close distance, um, bird shot is definitely no go. So now we're going to look at buckshot, slug, uh, and everything in between. Yeah, it's just a, you can see where it scarred the skin, but it didn't penetrate. Yeah. But I think the, I mean, the whole purpose of those were actually that we would have something when we have another herd of piglets running at us. So it's mostly meant for uh, smaller sized pigs, not so much the boar that size. But um, it's a ton of fun to shoot this thing. Obviously it's not suppressed, so it's a little loud. Um, I wonder if we could put a shotgun suppressor on it. That would be pretty neat. But otherwise, um, for what we need it for, we're not gonna shoot it a ton. Yeah, but we're out, so I don't think it's going to be that bad. Um, it's a good place for it. Yeah. You know how many times we come across the sounders with, you know, multiple piglets. Right. It's, it fits right in my Eberly stock mm -hmm. on the side, so it should be actually pretty pretty comfortable to be able to pull it out over my shoulder. I'm really happy to have that with us going forward. Yeah, it's perfect length. Yep. Thank you guys for watching again, and uh, uh, we'll see you next time. Texas Yacht. Oh, yeah. Can't get up. Can't get up.